So that was Josh Smith, as you know, and Joe Bonamassa playing rhythm for him. Uh, it was such a great performance. It's from a fan's iPhone. I wanted to open the video with that. Originally, this video was going to be about uh, his new course on True Fire called Blue Highways. I bought the course, and there was something I learned that was really profound and simple. What it is is he takes the theme and he turns it into a hook. And it becomes basically the song when you're playing blues and then you depart from it and go crazy. And he just demonstrated that. If you listen again, he went crazy first and then he returned to a theme. So what you're about to see is him kind of showing a simpler version of this concept where he plays the theme, he departs, he twists it, he turns it. And then I do the same thing with my riff, but we also got to go down to his studio and I hadn't been there in a couple of years and he's got it all tricked out now. So that's later in the video, check it out. Uh, click the link below if you wanna buy his new course on True Fire. I did, I encourage you to do it too. Uh, I love being a student of the guitar. I love doing sessions, I love teaching, but I also, I wanna be a student too. This is a great course. Uh, for learning stuff from Josh. Also, there's my link below for our online masterclass. You can check out the 14 day free trial. So Josh, that was an amazing example of this concept that I learned from buying your course on True Fire. <laughs> awesome. And and it's it's you restrict yourself to a simple three or four or five note phrase. Yeah. You pound that, you alter it, you develop it, you twist it, and then then you go free and then you come back to it. Yeah. This was part of I mean, when I was a kid, 
I mean, and I'm still the same way now. I was just obsessed with, like, you know, my heroes and then trying to figure out why certain things certain guys played resonated more with me than other right. things. Right. And it always came back to the, the, the hooks, yeah. the, the, the heart, the soul, the things that guys would play that you could, like, hang yeah. your hat on, you yeah. know? So yeah. when Albert King would play... Bam, ba, da, yeah. And and then play something else and then come back to it. And he would always or or he'd always end those licks by going down to the fifth. It's like it was this hook that I was waiting for. Right. And I could hear, you know, those those little things happen. And when I started to kind of play gigs a lot, I was so young, you know, 13, 14. And like like most people, when you first start to solo all the time, you repeat yourself constantly. And I started to realize I was running out of things to say in front of an audience when I had to play these gigs that were three sets a night. You okay, know? yeah. And so I would start to literally limit myself on purpose. I gotcha. would tell myself, okay, when this solo starts, you're going to play just these three frets, three strings, these right. three notes, and you're going to make the solo work, and, and, and you're going to get a reaction from somebody in the audience just from keeping it that simple, you know? And it really helps you with your ability to be lyrical and to tell a story because, it, you know, yes, the notes that you play are important, but sometimes not as important as the attitude, the inflection, the timing, the phrasing in which you play the things. Where you take a theme, you called it handcuffing yourself? It's uh, silly, I mean, but that's tr I really thought about it that way when I was younger. Yeah. I used to think about a few things like that when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. Just to make myself start things in a certain way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because then it always feels like after that, it takes care of itself. Well, yeah, and if you have five notes that you're restricting yourself to and you're recombining them and kind of embellishing them, it's the greatest way it's to... It's the same thing like uh, taking a breath before the solo starts instead of coming in right on the downbeat or whatever. Yeah, and if you do something simple and repetitive, although I hate to use that word, it makes the crazy stuff sound fresh. So the, the, the yin well, and yang of you're right. a hook... Yeah, well, I mean, and as you know, that's the stuff that the people who don't play guitar can relate to. Right. Which is most yeah. of the people that are listening. Right, yeah. It's funny, I, I saw a uh, um, a John Mayer concert and Isaiah Sharkey, he's doing this solo, right? And he's on the, all the big screens. And at the moment where he starts repeating this phrase way up high on the neck, the entire audience just erupts. It's exactly what you're saying. And you must have experienced that, like, I'm sure, in your shows. Well, you know, I mean, when you... <laughs> well, that's the thing about gigging, I think, that is sometimes getting lost now with some younger cats. Uh -huh. They jump so far ahead in technique and ability yeah, because they have so much information available to them. Right. But so many of my friends now who are these unbelievably great younger guitar players, they haven't spent five nights a week playing four hours a night yeah. where they're forced to solo all night. Yeah. And that's really where you build up all that muscle memory, where you build up the ability to get house from the audience, you know, by playing something simple. Yeah. But that regular people go, oh, that's cool. You know, they can react and respond to that. Whereas, you know, all, all that other stuff, a lot of times you're playing for only the musicians, you know, and the yeah. guitar players, which is cool too. Yeah. But it's like a... You know, it's a balance of all of that. Stuff. Yeah, and, and for me, I I spent my whole professional life making my parts simpler and simpler. And so now I'm left with a very simple style. <laughs> so that's that's what happened to me because I would play something kind of with an embellishment or whatever. And whoever I was working with would go, oh, that's great, but do it the simple way. Okay. And, and so day after day, minute after minute, I was always simplifying. Yeah, but that lets you hone in on, you know, kind of what made you you. I mean, it's the yeah. same reason drummers. Yeah. You know, we all love drummers who can play all this stuff, but who are the guys that work? That's right. You know, the guys yeah. who play drums, you know, yeah. and play for yeah. the song. You do is you create a song out of this blues progression. I'll show you mine. 
That's the basic lick that I keep repeating in different flavors. It might be shorter. When I go to the four chord, I did this. Sometimes I go up the octave. You keep finding new ways to restate this theme, and then when you break free, it's super fresh because you've played a melody. So I remember when Pete and Thorne and I first came here, there yeah. wasn't much in this room. There was not much in here. If I couldn't afford it, I just waited. I just saved, I didn't cut corners, you know what I mean? And that's why it took so long, but it's also why I think I'm so happy with it now. You and know? you've inherited some of my favorite yeah. multi-tracks that I used to work on in the 80s and 90s. So these are Studer A800s, yeah. which uh, I know everybody loves the A837s because they're smaller and a little more reliable, but these are the tone, man, on these. Right. There is so much iron in them. They weigh the same as a car, basically. And um, this one I got from Rafael Sadiq, my former boss, who I still sometimes play with. Uh, he just gave it to me. He's a great dude. And so I had it, and I needed a remote. It needed a ton of work because it had just been sitting in the garage. And a tidbit is that D'Angelo's uh, Brown Sugar album was recorded on this tape. Oh, that, that blows me away. <laughs> and I asked Kevin Shirley, who I know through Joe Bonamassa, if he had an A800, because I remember seeing somewhere that he had had one at a time. Yeah. And he said, yeah, it's sitting in my garage in Malibu. Uh, and I said, well, can I buy the remote? And he says, well, if you take the machine, too. So I took <laughs> his machine and the remote, and his ended up being in better shape. So we've been slowly merging the two into one yeah. super tape machine. And now this one works. That's great. It's a dream come true, man. I loved these machines. I love the smell, too, when you... <laughs> that tape smell just... Oh, I'm just excited yeah. to, you know, for special projects, for yeah. live stuff where I know there's not going to be any overdubs. Yeah. It's part of my whole philosophy anyways, where you just force yourself to commit. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I want to do, is just make choices quickly and live with them and, be ha you know, just do well, it. Well, you can do overdubs, but you just do a few, and that's, that's exactly. how it should be anyway. Yeah. And it won't, but yeah. now I've actually got to figure it out where I can... I go out of the tape machine into Pro Tools, and then I open a session at Pro Tools, bring up every tape machine, every channel of the tape machine in Pro Tools, run headphones from Pro Tools. Gotcha. We track all day on the tape machine, and then at the end of the day, dump it in. But then using time code, I can even come back later, even if the tape's erased, and still overdub in tape to the to the Pro Tools session without drift. It that's works. great. So you're getting the sound of the tape machine 100% of the time. 100%. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So you got it set up kind of the way you want it. Yeah, I mean, obviously we've experimented now over the years, and I know where I like <laughs> everything sounds best, you know. Um, but we found a nice groove for setting up either three or four piece at the same time. So normally if it's trio, I'll put my amps in here uh -huh. so that I have isolation. If we want extreme isolation, we'll just go direct on the bass. But otherwise, we'll put the B15 sometimes in, in that airlock room between the live room and the Oh, yeah, room. you thought of everything. You've got little rooms all over yeah, the place. So, yeah, so that enables us to still use the amp but, but have complete isolation on the drums. And the Hammond, that's sweet. Yeah, and then if we track four piece with the Hammond, I'll put the Leslie in there, and I'll put I'll just use normally one small amp, and I'll I have a few more of these. I'll just build yeah. a room around my amps yeah. and have them in this corner. You know, it just depends. But yeah, normally for trio, I put my amps in there because then we have total isolation. And uh, and you probably keep a lot of your parts, your tracking parts. I well, uh, that's man. I don't know about you, but I'm always every time I track. I'm not, I'm thinking only of, let me get one part that sticks. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You yeah. know, and like the room itself, I treated it purposely to, to not be totally dead. You know what I mean? But not take your head off. I get, you know, it has a lot more ambience than I thought. It's a lot more live than I expected. Well, because I didn't, wow. I mean, it just seemed like why well, build it where I couldn't, yeah. I could take it away with these. You yeah, know? Right. I wanted to have enough to have a really good sounding drum kit in here. And the wood floor, wood floor helps a lot, I'm sure, too. Dude, the wood floor helps a ton. And yeah. when I'm just doing guitar overdubs and I put amps here in the middle of the room, yeah. it's like I have so much option. <sighs> You know, I get obviously great direct sound, but I can put, you know, mics up in these corners. There's angles everywhere. Oh, yeah. You know? It's got to so be a good room sound for guitar. It's really, No doubt. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. important to me. It was one of the things that was important to me, you know? Even when I have the amps in here, I'll often put, put mics up in the ceiling because it's also cornered up in there. Oh, yeah. Cool. You know? So I... 
you know, the guitar tone was number one. <laughs> of course, of course it is. <laughs> Those drums sound great, though. Okay. Now that I have them back here, yeah. I play a little every day, so yeah. I'm getting better now. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, sounds I mean, great. The, you know, the way I treated the room even was like, to have the panels. I love these. These are like old school. These, well, these are actually old school. Like these I got from Bill Schnee. Aww. And they were from when he built Schnee Studios. And these were ones he didn't use. They were left over in the boxes from the 80s. Yeah. So they're NOS. I remember a session at Schnee's. It was the first time I'd ever walked into a control room after a take. And it was like, holy shit, it's a record. Yeah. Like it right. sounds yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. And that stuck with me. Um, so I, I, I wanted to give some of that vibe. Like even this, this is from Schnee. This was uh, one of the, p the panels that was on the wall at Schnee. Um, great. Yeah. This is your plate. Where did the plate come from? See, it's in behind this, this I guess a day bed I, in your guest room, right? I couldn't think of anywhere else to put the plate besides behind the bed. That's I don't the right have an place for it. Really, you know? Yeah, no, it's the right place. Um, this came, I bought this from Jonathan Wilson, who's a great guitar player and yep. producer. And, sure is. Uh, he was moving studios and he just needed it gone. This is called the Echo Plate 2. And uh, man, it's, it's uh, you know, everybody is hyperbolous <laughs> with this stuff, yeah. but it is kind of magic. You uh, just yeah. run something in and it's immediately like, whoa, you know? So when you, you produce, your artist can live in this this room. It's a good solution to Yeah, we wake up in the morning, yeah. come out here and work. It was important to my wife that we have a guest room when I built this. Yeah. So it's like when, when her family comes to visit Absolutely. or friends yes. need a place. Yeah. Right. I've had some friends who've got kicked out, you know. Had their Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. If you are a subscriber, please ring the bell. It lets us let you know every time a new video is released. You can also support us by clicking the link below for the online masterclass. As I always say, we're up to over 100 hours of lessons and content, over a thousand videos, and we add more every month. There's a 14-day free trial. Take your time, take a long look. We'd love to have you join us.